So, was Jesus Christ born again? And um, the quick answer to that is no. Okay, Jesus Christ did not have to be born again because he is God. He was without sin. Okay, and so some people will use these verses. There's a handful of verses or passages in the Bible that talk about Christ being the firstborn. So they take that to mean that he was born again. Okay, um, they say that he was born again when he resurrected. They say that being born again means, you know, being a spirit. We can't we can't be born again until after death, according to these false teachers. But I've shown in a previous video that's not what the Bible teaches. That when a person becomes born again, it happens in this life at the moment when they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for their salvation, when they submit to Him, when they turn from their sin and their self to Christ, and you know when they when they switch from being a servant of sin and Satan to becoming a servant of Jesus Christ, that is when they are saved and they are born again, they are regenerated. Okay, it takes place in this life. And I've shown that because the, the, the past tense, uh, you know, the, the word born, it's past tense. It, it has happened when, in these certain passages that I've pointed out. And Jesus said that you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. You must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Jesus Christ is the king of the kingdom. Okay. He does, he does not need to enter it. He's, he's in it um, already. So he did not need to be born again. But I want, to, I want to explain then what do these verses mean when it says that Christ was the firstborn. And I want to point out first that it doesn't say that Christ was the firstborn again. Okay, it doesn't say born again. It says he was the firstborn. And so we know in a lot of passages in the Old Testament when they talk about the firstborn, it means that, um, you know, the, the child who was born first, the oldest, you know. But it doesn't always necessarily mean that, okay. Firstborn also has a figurative sense, and, and I'm going to show you that it's used in a handful of times in the Bible. So we'll look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 22 first. So Exodus chapter 4, verse 22 says, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, This saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Okay, God said, Moses tells us to Pharaoh that Israel is the firstborn. Um, okay, so we know that there were other nations that existed on earth previously before Israel. Okay, you know, the heathen nations and such. So, uh, so Israel was not the first nation on the earth, but God says that Israel is his firstborn. Okay. Now, let's look at Jeremiah 31, check verse 9. So, Jeremiah 31, verse 9. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 31, verse 9 says, They shall come with weeping. And with all supplications, I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Okay, now he says, Ephraim is the firstborn um, from Israel. But let's go to Genesis chapter 48 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 48, verse 13. Genesis chapter 48, verse 13 says, And Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, toward Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand, toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and left his hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Okay, so it says Manasseh was the firstborn of Jacob. Okay. Of Israel. It says that Ephraim was the younger. So Ephraim was not the oldest. He was not born first from Jacob. But in Jeremiah chapter 31, 
verse 9, God says that Ephraim is my firstborn. So this means in a figurative sense. It doesn't mean that Ephraim was born first from Jacob. What does this mean? Well, I want to look at some other verses before we explain that. So let's look at Job chapter 18, verse 13. Job chapter 18, verse 13. So Job chapter 18 verse 13 says, It shall devour the strength of his skin, even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. The firstborn of death. And so what's being spoken of here is a disease, okay, a powerful uh, destructive disease. The firstborn of death shall devour his strength. So this is firstborn in a figurative sense, obviously. And let's look uh, again at Isaiah 14, verse 30. Isaiah 14, verse 30 says, And the firstborn of the poor shall feed, and the needy shall lie down in safety, and I will kill thy root with famine, and he shall slay thy remnant. So the firstborn of the poor. So this means the poorest of the poor. Okay, we're not talking about someone who was born first, someone who was the oldest. It's not the oldest of the poor. We're talking about the poorest of the poor. Now let's look at Psalm 89, verse 27. Psalm 89, verse 27. Psalm 89, verse 27 says, Also I will make him my firstborn higher than the kings of the earth. Okay, so this is speaking of David, but also of Jesus Christ. And obviously David was not the firstborn in his family. He was not born first, okay? He was one of the younger of brothers okay, in that family. But this is speaking of David and also a prophecy of Jesus, that he would be higher than the kings of the earth. He would be the firstborn. So now let's look at some of these passages that speak of Jesus Christ being the firstborn, and I'll explain what it means. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29. So, Romans chapter 8, verse 29. Romans 8, 29 says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Okay, so that Christ might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now let's look at Colossians 1, 15 and 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 and 18. Colossians 1, 15 says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? And verse 18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And this is really the key verse to understand this, that being the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So what does preeminence mean? Preeminence means the fact of surpassing all others, or superiority. And so that is the, the figurative meaning here of firstborn, okay? So, you know, Jesus Christ is a firstborn among many brethren. He has the preeminence. He is king. He is Lord, okay? He is Lord of all creation. Okay, so in, in verse 18 here in Colossians chapter 1, it talks about he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, okay? That in all things he might have the preeminence. You know, he is the head. He is the preeminent one. That's what that means. Okay, so it's not talking about physically, you know, the one who's born first, the one who's oldest, it doesn't mean that Christ had to be born again. And I've said that this Fred R. Coulter guy, he teaches this false doctrine that Christ was born again when he was resurrected. We're not born again until we're resurrected. And, you know, Joyce Myers and other word of faith false teachers, they say that Jesus Christ went to hell for three days and suffered 
and then he had to be born again. It's absolutely false. Jesus Christ is God. He never ceased to be God when he became incarnate. When he was on this earth, he was fully God and fully man. Okay? He never ceased to be God at all. He was without sin from the beginning. Jesus Christ existed from the beginning. He was never created. He never sinned. He never needed to be born again. Okay, Only men need to be born again because we have a fallen nature since Adam sinned in the Garden of Eden. Everyone who was born from then on was tainted with this sin nature. And even Christians, once a person is saved, that sin nature is still with us. But we are born again because our spirit is made alive to God. Okay. And if you're not born again, then you need to be born again. And your only chance at it is in this life. And uh, we never know when our life's going to end. So I would uh, ask you to, to consider that today, that you would put your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you would submit to him, because no one was ever saved with a mere intellectual knowledge or mental assent. You know, just saying, I believe that Jesus could be God. I believe that maybe there is a God. There probably is a heaven and a hell. But when I die, everything's going to be forgiven. No, you need to come to Christ. You need to turn from your sin. So I would plead with you that if you haven't done that already, that you would today. And when you do that, you will be born again instantly. And uh, you'll be saved. Christ was not born again. He did not need to be born again. And the firstborn just means that he would have the preeminence. Okay? You know, Israel was the firstborn you know, nation for God. That was, that means Israel has the preeminence over all other nations, okay? Um, so I hope that you can see this, and there's some other verses that talk about Christ being the firstborn, in Hebrews 1, 6, and chapter 12, verse 23, and Revelation 1, verse 5, but I don't feel the need to read those. Um, so yeah, that's it. Christ did not need to be born again. And God bless you. Thanks for watching. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven.